Today, we're going to be talking about the lore and history of my favorite character on Craig of the Creek, the Green Poncho, also known as Omar. But real quick, I wanted to remind you all that we are having a live stream Q&A with Zeno Robinson, the voice of the Green Poncho, as well as the rest of the cast of Craig of the Creek on the channel this Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll put a link to it in the description down below, as well as a link to a video with more info and our Streamly shop, where you can buy a print of the green poncho autographed by Zeno Robinson himself as well as your other favorite Craig of the Creek characters such as Cannonball, Bryson, JP, Grandpa Earl, Bridget, and Craig himself. Links in the pinned comment down below and now let's dive into it. Omar was first introduced to us as the Green Poncho, a mysterious figure who guarded the overpass to prevent kids from traveling past the busy road that separated the two sides of the creek, preventing King Xavier from trying to extend his regime to the kids on Craig's side of the creek. The story of the Green Poncho as a whole, though, starts many years before this, with Michelle Green. At the time, the other side of the creek was under the rule of Xavier's older sister, King Cheyenne. At first, Michelle Green was likely just an ordinary girl playing at the creek. When Kenneth ruled, he did so with friendship and generosity, but Cheyenne clearly had focused on expanding the territory, and Michelle Green wanted to stop that for one reason or another. Michelle Green would put on the Green Poncho to conceal her identity, and in doing so, adopt the name The Green Poncho, and started using the overpass as a last defense against and Cheyenne's forces. Around this time, we would meet Omar, whose playstyle was extremely simple in that he just liked to entertain his friend Maya. Maya's playstyle will be discussed at length in another video with the other King's champions, but one thing Maya did for Omar was provide a purpose. While she was driven to do extracurriculars like sports, her temper prevented her from making the team she wanted, and Omar was shown to calm her down, something he seemed to do a lot. They of course end up meeting and helping Xavier, and end up befriending him because of this, at least in some sense of the word, and are happy to hang out with him for the perks such as snacks and being able to mess with some of his sister's loyal subjects from their tree fort. As Cheyenne is preparing to leave the creek for high school, she is seen being annoyed by her BFF Randy, leading to her telling Xavier to choose his BFF more wisely, as you're stuck with them for a long time. Xavier could easily have given Maya and Omar both positions in his kingdom, but he saw it as a way to make people fight over him, leading to Omar beating Maya, but not wanting anything to do with Xavier or the throne. Maya, of course, became the king's BFF, and Omar would be rescued by Michelle Green, who would begin to train him to guard the overpass as well. Michelle Green indicates here that she went through something similar to Omar and Maya, suggesting that she and Randy, perhaps, had to fight for the role of BFF from Cheyenne, though I don't imagine it happened in quite the same way with Omar and Maya, and was less about fighting for Cheyenne's affections, and more so for the actual seat of power. Randy won by pure muscle, I imagine, but Cheyenne probably regretted the choice as we saw. Michelle Green would keep defending the overpass and even try to attack Xavier on his own turf when he took over the throne. But after her glasses fell off, Xavier recognized her as a student from his sister's class, meaning she is now in high school as well. High schoolers are forbidden to play at the creek, particularly the way Michelle Green is as some sort of superhero with the other children. She of course succumbs to the peer pressure and leaves the creek to hang out with other high schoolers. It is always interesting to hear the stories of kids leaving the creek for high school because there is such a blurry line between being young enough or too old to play there. Michelle Green's playstyle is similar to Omar's in that she likes having a purpose and adopting her superhero imaginative play, but she does so with much more nurturing vibes to her, wanting to protect younger kids' playtime like a superhero babysitter. Michelle Green would end up calling her high school friend Diana to hang out, presumably the same Diana that King Cheyenne said was picking up her and Randy from the creek after she passed the throne on to her younger brother. Later, Michelle Green would be seen hanging out on Cheyenne's porch with Randy and their other friends, indicating that whatever happened between them is patched up, and Diana has managed to connect these friends again, whoever she may be. Omar would continue his post as the Green Poncho for several summers. His playstyle had been about serving a purpose, and even if he isn't directly interacting with the other kids, he feels fulfilled having his purpose at the overpass. His persona is inspired by a steady stream of graphic novels, 
anime, and video game characters with tragic backstories and cool loner vibes, something that helps mask Omar's inherent insecurities. Despite how cool he likes to act, he constantly feels embarrassed even if others see him as the humanization of the Green Power Ranger, that is, someone to look up to. After the other side of the creek is liberated, Omar is able to abandon his Green Poncho persona and play freely, but he still struggles emotionally with what happened between him and Maya, and isn't able to play as freely as the other kids seem to be. This changes when Craig and the kids discover a piece of Kenneth's cube and begin a quest to find every piece, giving Omar a mission for his playtime and a reason to interact with Craig and his friends to get more fun aspects of play incorporated into his playstyle. However, when they're not on a mission for Kenneth's cube, Omar is happy to give them their space to have their little filler fun. As without the cube, he doesn't seem to see much of a reason to hang out with them. That isn't to say that their friendship is shallow, just that Omar craves having some sort of mission to do, in order to give him a reason to hang out with people again and again and again. When not with friends, he apparently overindulges in video games, another symptom of his deep need to feel like he is advancing, even if it just means grinding miserably to level up. While we've never seen him go on the bender that Craig did with Slide Adventure 2 Battle, his sister has told him he can't stay around the house playing video games all day, and he had to be bribed by his brother-in-law to go out and actually find Craig again. Eventually, his quest with Craig and the Stump Kids for Kenneth's Cube led them to the Moss Village, where we got to see some of the deeper insights into Omar's psyche, and how having a purpose can be addictive with how satiating it is, but not always great for moving forward meaningfully and developing relationships and after having learned that, was able to finally make something resembling peace with Maya in the most recent episode. In a way, this means that their friendship has come full circle, with Maya now relying on Omar to be the emotional support she needs during their playtime. And it is amazing to see that Omar is willing not just to stand up and give that support, but also the space she needs in order to feel safe playing together again. This is the lore, history, and psychology of the Green Poncho as I understand it, but if there is anything I didn't include that you think I should have, put it in a comment down below and maybe I'll work it into a follow-up video. And while you're down there, use the Streamly link to check out all the autographed artwork we have available from your favorite Craig of the Creek cast members, such as Zeno Robin himself, the voice of the Green Poncho, Philip Solomon, the voice of Craig, Michael Croner as JP, Terrence Hardy as Bryson Williams, Natalie Lander as Bridget, and Jeff Trammell as Cannonball, who should all be joining us for a live stream Q&A this Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on the channel. Links to that in the pinned comment down below. Though you can also get an autographed print from Philip Morris, the voice of Grandpa Earl, although he won't be able to join us for the live Q&A. See you guys then!